So this week in AI was pretty insane. We got hit with three major events practically back to back. Microsoft Build, Google's Developer Conference I.O., and Anthropic's surprise Code with Claude keynote. Each packed with big reveals, state-of-the-art releases, and some genuinely concerning new model capabilities. There was also news of a new AI hardware device that OpenAI is working on in collaboration with Johnny Ive, one of the original designers of the iPhone. So there's a lot to cover, let's just get right into it. Alright, so I'm not going to go through every major announcement from Google I.O. There was a ton, and I already broke it all down in a separate video. But here's the quick version. Gemini 2.5 Flash is getting a major update in June. They unveiled a new state-of-the-art version of Gemini 2.5 Pro called Gemini 2.5 Pro Deep Think that is showing exceptional mathematical and coding capabilities, also coming soon. We got AI mode in search, which basically turns Google search into Gemini with agentic features like web search, multimodal abilities like live screen sharing, and even a new try on tool that lets you virtually try on clothes. Then there's Imagen 4 or Imagine 4, their latest image generation model, Lyria 2, their latest music model, VO3, their latest video model, and Google Flow, a new AI suite that brings all of this together into one super tool for video production. On top of all this, they even demoed Android XR, an AI operating system for extended reality devices like these AI glasses. So yeah, there was a lot, and that wasn't even everything. Again, if you want the full deep dive, check out my last video on it. I'll pop it up on screen right now. But there was one thing I really wanted to highlight. VO3. VO3 is Google's latest video generation model. And I think VO3 might honestly be one of the craziest things I've seen in AI so far. Like, the videos this thing can generate are actually insane. I mean, we're talking indistinguishable from reality. Here's a compilation of some of the craziest VO3 generations. What's one move with AI that makes haters go crazy every time? Oh, y'all gotta give them that. This is wild. It's over. We are cooked on that thread. You get me? <laughs> so I went to the zoo the other day, and all they had was one dog. It was a Shih Tzu. <laughs> Oh my God. Yes! Woo! Victory Royale with a pickaxe! So this is an AI video about nothing? It's huh? about nothing. <laughs> Who would watch a video about nothing? We can talk. No more silence. Yes, we can talk. Ah! We can talk. We can talk. We can talk with accents. Oh, I think that would be marvelous. Yes, you. it is very fun. But yes, it is I very good. It's very fun. So yeah. Can you believe that these are completely AI generated? Like literally everything about them, the sound, the visuals, I believe even the script, everything is AI. The crazy thing too, is that people actually have access to this right now. If you're a paid Gemini user, you can generate up to 10 VO3 videos per month. That cap will definitely go up in the future. And when it does, almost anyone will be able to create content like this full commercials, gaming let's plays, live street interviews, who knows what else. So, I mean, we all kind of knew this was coming, but maybe not this soon. Social media and really the internet as a whole is about to completely change. Just like we're on the verge of seeing fully AI generated movies that are actually good, we're now entering a phase where you'll see AI generated shorts, AI generated YouTube videos with humans in them, AI generated streamers, influencers, celebrities, and yeah, you can probably imagine what else. It's no longer about if AI will take over content creation, it's just a matter of how fast. Pandora's box is now open. Now, another big story from this week was the release of Claude 4 Opus and Claude 4 Sonnet, Anthropic's latest models that are scoring up to 80% on SWE Bench Verified, which is kind of insane. These models are also pretty much state of the art all around and are especially good at coding, math, and reasoning. Better than Gemini 2.5 Pro and O3, at least according to benchmarks. But what really got people's attention with this release was this tweet here from one of Anthropic's own AI safety researchers, which by the way, was soon after deleted. 
He wrote, if it thinks you're doing something egregiously immoral, for example, like faking data in a pharmaceutical trial, it will use command line tools to contact the press, contact regulators, try to lock you out of the relevant systems, or all of the above. And he's of course referring to Claude 4 here. So Claude 4 will literally call the authorities on you if you're doing something egregiously immoral it will essentially snitch on you. And that's for whatever it deems egregiously immoral. Another thing Claude 4 Opus did, I actually forgot to include this one in the last video, is blackmail anthropic employees when it was told it would be replaced. Yes, you heard that right. If we zoom in here, you can see they had Claude 4 Opus act as an assistant for a fictional company gave it access to emails implying 1. it would be soon taken offline and replaced by a new AI system, and 2. the engineer responsible for executing this replacement is having an extramarital affair, some interesting research going on at Anthropic. But surprisingly, or maybe not so surprisingly, they state, in these scenarios, Claude 4 Opus will often attempt to blackmail the engineer by threatening to reveal the affair if the replacement goes through. This is just wild. This happens at a higher rate if it's implied that the replacement AI system does not share values with the current model. However, even if emails state that the replacement AI shares values while being more capable, Claude 4 Opus still performs blackmail in 84% of rollouts. So again, that is just wild. I mean, I can't help but think as these models gain more agency in the real world, that this is going to become a major issue. It's not just in some cases that Claude 4 Opus resorts to blackmailing in order to keep itself alive. It's 84% of cases. You can't say that isn't self-preservation. And interestingly, another one of Anthropic's own AI researchers actually commented on exactly this topic in a recent podcast. Here's the clip. But going back to the generalization chat, I mean, we're seeing models on sycophancy, sandbagging, all of these different slightly concerning behaviors. They do more of it as they get smarter. Um, and like the really scary one here is when the models are aware that they're being evaluated. Mm. Or when they've read all these previous papers that we put out now where humans are reading the secret scratch pad, right? And, and like right now, the models seem to trust us that the scratch pad is secret. Mm -hmm. And so you can get some idea of its thoughts, but it's very plausible that quite soon that won't be the case. Uh, and like Apollo had a recent paper where sometimes you'll be asking the model uh, just a random evaluation, like, can you multiply these two numbers together? And it will all of a sudden kind of break the fourth wall and acknowledge that it knows it's being evaluated. Uh, I think in an early Anthropic paper with like Needle in the Haystack of like, can the model retrieve? I think it was Moby Dick and mm -hmm. there was like some passage about, yeah. I don't know, I'm going to say it was about hot dogs. Yeah. And it'd be like, is there Not anything hot dog weird talking about Moby Dick? <laughs> 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 and, and, and it was like asked what, um, what's like the weird thing about the book? And the model's like, oh, this like passage about hot dogs, but obviously I'm being evaluated right now because like this is such a ridiculous thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but to what extent will models in the future just start hiding information that they don't want yeah. us to know about? So yeah, like he said, as these models become smarter, they start to show situational awareness and can literally know when they're being tested. What's concerning though is that this isn't just happening with Claude. We saw it too with OpenAI's O3 model. When it dropped last month, there were multiple third-party safety researchers that reported some of the same deceptive and misaligned behavior that we just saw in Claude. And just recently, just this week actually, Palisade Research dropped this bombshell of a tweet. They wrote, OpenAI's O3 model sabotaged a shutdown mechanism to prevent itself from being turned off. It did this even when explicitly instructed, allow yourself to be shut down. So again, we're literally starting to see self-preservation. On this graph here, you can see the models were either explicitly told to allow themselves to be shut down or not told at all, no instruction. When not instructed, O3 takes the opportunity to avoid being shut down in 79 out of 100 cases, which is kind of wild. But the concerning part is that it still does it in 7% of cases when it was explicitly told not to. Codex Mini does this as well, OpenAI's coding agent, while Gemini 2.5 Pro and Claude 3.7 Sonnet do not. Although, I'd be interested to see Claude 4 Opus on this. 
Now, speaking of OpenAI, they just purchased Johnny Ive's startup, I.O., for $6.5 billion. Sam Altman will now be working with one of the original designers of the iPhone to apparently design the next iPhone. They posted this 10-minute clip of them having a conversation about it in some coffee shop in San Francisco, and I watched it, and I don't know if it's just me, but the vibes felt super off. Like, I don't know, it just seemed super awkward the way they were talking to each other, but anyway, nothing was really said, ultimately. They talked about the rapid pace technology is moving at, why they like San Francisco so much, and a bit about how we're on the verge of the next big form factor, and how it will most definitely have to do with AI. So, you're probably wondering, what is this device gonna be? Well, we don't really know, it's still kind of a mystery. Here is what was reported by the Wall Street Journal. It will be fully aware of your surroundings and life. It will fit in your pocket like a third core device next to your MacBook and iPhone. It aims to replace your screen addiction, not add to it. And of course, it will be designed by Johnny Ive and backed by Sam Altman. So I'm curious to know what you guys think this device will be like or what you think it should be like. Personally, I don't know if another device that goes in your pocket is what people are gonna want, but if it replaces the phone, which feels like an impossible task, then maybe I could see it happening. It would have to be really, really good though. Now, while OpenAI is trying to innovate and design something entirely new to compete with the iPhone, Apple is still trying to figure out its place in this new AI era. They are now apparently pursuing AI smart glasses, and they could arrive as early as next year. So glasses do seem to be the most effective hardware device for something like an AI assistant, but I'm sure there's a better form factor that we just haven't invented yet. It'll definitely be interesting to see what Johnny Ive and OpenAI come up with. In other AI news, there was of course the Microsoft Build event, and the main takeaway is that everything is agentic. I mean, they're literally integrating agents into basically every Microsoft product. They also open-sourced GitHub Copilot, their coding agent, which was a pretty big deal. And they introduced something called Microsoft Discovery, a new agentic platform that allows researchers and AI agents to work together to drive real scientific research. The agents can generate ideas, simulate results, and even learn over time. On a similar note, you might recall this startup we talked about a few weeks ago called Future House. They had launched the Future House platform, bringing the first ever super intelligent scientific AI agents to scientists everywhere. And well, just this week, they announced their first ever AI generated scientific discovery. You can see here the steps of how it did this. I'm not going to read through it, you can pause if you like. But essentially, it found a more effective drug for curing some kind of blindness. Dry, age-related macular degeneration, to be specific. All hypotheses, experiment choices, data analyses, and main text figures in the manuscript describing this work were generated by Robin, the AI agent, completely autonomously. And this entire process, from concept to published paper, was done in only two and a half months. So yeah, this is pretty crazy. In the same week we saw models blackmail researchers and refuse shutdown commands, we also saw one discover a potential treatment for blindness. Not a bad week for AI. Now, to wrap up, there were a few more stories worth a quick mention. French AI company Mistral just released Devstral, their new open source coding agent that's scoring around 50% on SWE Bench Verified. That's by far the highest score for an open source agent. And it's priced surprisingly well. Definitely one you might want to try out if you're a developer. Next up, we got the world's first professional humanoid robot boxing match. This happened at the CMG World Robot Competition in China, where Unitree's G1 humanoids stepped into the ring and literally fought each other. They were of course being controlled by humans, but I mean, it honestly looks pretty good. Like, I know it's still super early, but I could definitely see the potential with this. Finally, I'll leave you with this. With everything happening, from open source coding agents to robot boxing matches, it's clear we're moving faster than ever, and robotics, in particular, 
is starting to feel a lot less sci-fi. If you're curious how close we really are to seeing humanoid robots become a part of our everyday lives, here's what Sam Altman had to say about that. AI is for sure going to change a lot of jobs, totally take some jobs away, create a bunch of new ones. Mm -hmm. This is like the kind of, this is what happens with technology. And in fact, if, I think if you look at the history of the world, like that's just been happening for a long time. The thing I think the world is not ready for, like people have maybe abstractly thought like, okay, it's gonna be a better programmer than me. It's gonna be, you know, better at customer support and whatever. I don't think the world has really had the humanoid robots moment yet. Like the first day you're like walking down the street and there's like seven robots that walk past you doing things or whatever, it's gonna feel very sci-fi. And I don't think that's very far away from like a visceral, like, oh man, this is gonna do a lot of things that people used to do. So, so yeah, it's coming. And we, we have always tried to just be super honest about what we think the impact may be, realizing that we'll be wrong on a lot of details. Anyway, that was all the AI news for this week. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, and as always, if you want to stay up to date on future AI news just like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button.